the serpent's hand. From human rights activists, to civil rights activists, to animal rights activists, our world is filled with people fighting and advocating for the rights of all sorts of things. It stands to reason, then, that in a world such as the SCP universe, filled with anomalies, there are going to be individuals fighting for the rights of the anomalous. These people are known as the Serpent's Hand. Ultimately, the Serpent's Hand would like to see all of the anomalies that they deem to be non-dangerous out free, with the public fully aware of their existence. And so this puts them at odds against groups like the Foundation and the GOC. Like many things in the SCP universe, the operations of the Serpent's Hand are fairly mysterious, but let's look at some of their beliefs and the work they've done. One of the few things we can say for certain about the Serpent's Hand, aside from their goal, is that they possess access to an extra-dimensional space known as the Wanderer's Library. The Wanderer's Library is basically a massive repository of books, including practically every book that was ever written, books that haven't been written yet, and books that will never be written, if you can wrap your head around that. The Serpent's Hand do not own or run the library, they merely utilize it, and in fact it's said that they only rediscovered the library in 1967, after being removed from it for some time. The library is staffed by individuals that apparently broke the rules of the library, such as not damaging books, not stealing books, and not harming anyone within the library. The archivists are connected to the desks in the main hall, and they instinctively know how to find every book within the library. They also handle the distribution of library cards, checking books out, and keeping track of who has borrowed which book. They possess no eyes and no legs, as they are directly connected to their chairs. Pages are the entities responsible for reshelving books in the library, possessing six to ten arms, bowed legs, and squat bodies, making them excellent climbers. They spend most of their time climbing across the vast arrays of shelves located within the library. The docents act as library guides, taking visitors to find books, as well as acting as library security against both hostile intruders and rule violators. They have no mouths, and their left hand is replaced with a chain connected to an ever-burning lantern. The library is apparently entered through the use of multi-dimensional portals called ways, although their nature and number is pretty much unknown. Many entities utilize the library for various purposes, and the Serpent's Hand use it as a base of operations and general meeting place. Unlike many other groups within the SCP universe, the Serpent's Hand don't have a strict hierarchy or organization process. They function as more of a loose political movement than a proper organization, and so the group seems to be divided into a number of different smaller factions with differing ideologies and methods. All it takes to be a part of the Serpent's Hand is to simply consider yourself one of the Serpent's Hand. There's likely no central leader to the entire group, merely leaders of different cells and factions. An individual known as M is one of them, as well as another that goes by the initials LS. LS's identity is up for debate, but a leading theory is that she is actually the Black Queen, a title for the daughter of Dr. Gears, a noted Foundation researcher. The Black Queen is known to have access to the Wanderer's Library and to hold a grudge against her father and the SCP Foundation. Additionally, it's believed that there are thousands of Black Queens across thousands of universes, and a number of them use the library as a meeting place, referring to each other as Little Sisters, or LS. An SCP connected to LS is SCP-268, a newsboy cap that causes a wearer to become unnoticeable by anyone around them. The wearer is generally completely ignored, and observers will be unable to recall any specific details about the wearer. If the wearer speaks or interacts physically with an observer, they will be noticed, but soon forgotten again. 
The effects seem to build upon a wearer, and if they wear it long enough, the effects strengthen and even linger after removing the hat. 268 was used in field operations by some Foundation agents, but after a while, everyone at the Foundation forgot the agent existed. That being said, it's certainly a useful anomaly for someone trying to go into places they don't belong. Unfortunately, the Foundation no longer possesses the SCP, as one day they discovered it missing, a note in its place reading, Thanks, I needed my hat back. L.S. There was also a label on the hat reading, The Garden is the Serpent's Place, connecting it to the Serpent's Hand. The Serpent's Hand don't exactly get along with most of the other paranormal groups acting in the SCP universe. They clash the most with the Global Occult Coalition, which they refer to as the Book Burners, due to the GOC's general policy of destroying the anomalous. The GOC have apparently launched at least one raid on the Wanderer's library, destroying part of it, and the GOC considers every Serpent's Hand member to be a high-level threat. The Serpent's Hand get along a little better with the SCP Foundation, which they refer to as the Jailers, although that's not saying much. The Serpent's Hand are fundamentally against the Foundation's policy of secrecy, and definitely object to their treatment and containment of harmless anomalies, but they do acknowledge that not every anomaly should be free. They get along fairly well with Marshall, Carter, and Dark, the merchants, due to their willingness to obtain anomalies from both the Foundation and the GOC for the right price. That being said, they are still wary of them, as MC and D rarely make fair bargains. The Serpent's Hand are more fascinated by the Church of the Broken God than anything else, but they are against the Chaos Insurgency, who they call the Mad Men, due to the damage they've done to the library and their general hostility. The Serpent's Hand generally believes that humanity is better off with full knowledge of the anomalous, so that they can better protect themselves from danger. It's not their stance that every anomaly should be left free and out in the open, so their beliefs are a bit more nuanced than, say, the GOC. In fact, there are cases where the Serpent's Hand have actually destroyed dangerous anomalies. SCP-407 was a song in an unidentified language sung by what seemed to be humans. Listeners of the song described it as soothing and beautiful, but while playing, 407 caused rapid cell generation in any life forms nearby. During the first minute, this only causes the subject to become much healthier curing scarring, wounds, chronic diseases, brain and spinal cord injuries, and more. During the second and third minutes, subjects begin experiencing unnecessary unrestrained cell growth as tumors and fat deposits begin covering their body. During the fourth minute, increased bacterial and fungal growth occurs, creating respiratory and digestive problems. Past five minutes, trace elements of plants or fungus as well as any animal life present begin to grow and replicate uncontrollably, often shaping into new organisms. Essentially, listening to the song causes life forms to erupt into plants and fungi, as well as new insect and animal life forms. Eventually, everything breaks down into a type of mold. The individual known as L.S. broke into Site-19 one day while wearing SCP-268, simply by walking in. L.S. seemingly broke in to utilize SCP-914 for an unknown purpose, but also managed to delete SCP-407 completely from the Foundation system. L.S. also left a note near SCP-914, and so I'll read it in its entirety to give some insight to the Serpent's Hand. Dear Sirs of the Foundation, Behind guns and protocol you hide, desperately chaining the ineffable, yourselves stuck within your own self-wrought pitiful cages of fear and ignorance. You think yourselves the shepherd guarding the flocks of the unwise over the night, but you are so shaken by doubt and fear that in your bewildered arrogance you would vainly seek to chain the sun itself unto the heavens to hold back the daily night. The delivering angels themselves you contain with three digits and four walls. 
Do you not see the blindness with which you walk and swing your blade? On the final day, would you have us contain Black Surtur himself with measures and science, and condemn ourselves to rotten stagnancy as you hold back his pure cleansing fires? I do not ask you not to act, but act with enlightenment and heart. Neither should one be seduced by the dark nor blinded by the light, but walk firmly in the twilight and gaze unto all realms. Walk the world of fire with bare feet, and you will find yourself without the scars you never knew you had. I leave you with one final truth. The garden is the serpent's place. The divinities of fear and order who come to walk in the cool evening air are only visitors. Do not fail to see the evil hiding in the light, nor the aromatic beauty of the palest flower of darkness. Signed sincerely, L.S. P.S. You'll thank me for deleting what you call 407. Due to the fragmented nature of the serpent's hand, it can be difficult to definitively state the group's purpose and methods. Some factions of the serpent's hand are willing to work with the foundation sometimes, while other groups are radical enough to cause end of the world scenarios. Some of them are willing to destroy dangerous anomalies, while many others in the group are anomalies themselves. In general though, the spread of knowledge of the paranormal is either their most important goal, or at least secrecy is of no concern of theirs, fully willing to expose the paranormal to the public. Some care more about the unfortunate treatment of harmless, sapient anomalies and risk their lives in attempts to free them. Perhaps the world at large would indeed be better off knowing about the anomalous. Or perhaps the world would plunge into chaos. Either way, the members of the Serpent's Hand are determined to spread the word.